Hi, how are you doing today? My name is QED23. So like I said in the last video, today I want to talk about my definition of investing. Because I think people have, I don't want to say the wrong idea, but how best to describe it. It's as though they have two different categories of investing. The term investing is kind of like a cargo cult word. We don't actually know what this word is. We just heard it in context a whole bunch of times. So we kind of have an idea of it. You know, it's this idea of you should renovate your kitchen because renovating your kitchen is a good investment. In one edition of the Steve Dangle podcast, Adam Wilde called his cell phone an investment. In this other video by Hank Green, he says the phrase invest in your digestion. Plus like you've also heard some like economists talk about the phrase, like the government should should invest in education or something like that. In that context, those terms kind of make sense. But then there is like this, I don't know if you see like capital A adult, it's more like all caps, bolded, italicized and underlined adult, you know, like this deep voice. Investing. And I don't really think that's true. I think you can easily find a definition that fits both criteria in a way that makes sense for everybody. So I'm going to say my definition of investing and then we're going to try to take it apart to see if it does meet all these different criteria that we've listed so far. So here's my definition on investing. An investment is something that you purchase in the hope that because you purchased it, you'll be a richer person after a certain amount of time. If this is true, if this actually does happen, you've made a good investment. If it does not happen, it's a bad investment. So therefore, let's say we have two timelines, timeline A and timeline B. In timeline A, because you didn't make this purchase, after a certain amount of time, you'll have, I don't know, let's say $1,000. In timeline B, because you made this purchase and the same amount of time, you're gonna be worth $2,000. So investing by this definition is the act of doing this investment, is the act of actually doing the purchase. So for this definition, I think we can already see the mythos of investing flowing through. Because in the vast majority of the things you purchase, there's no way for it to actually make you money. So right now to record this, I'm using a camera and a microphone that I got a few years ago. There's no way on earth I'm gonna actually get the same value for both of these two objects. The only things that really do kind of meet this definition are like lottery tickets and like things along the same lines, you know, like roll up the rim cups or something like that. And since that's kind of the standard definition, then yeah, of course stocks will fit into this category. Of course they become mythical. But I do want to point this out though. I said richer. I didn't necessarily say make more money, right? There is a key difference there, right? Because you can be richer by getting more money in over the same period of time, sure. But also by spending less money. Let's say over a year, I spend, you know, $100 a month on groceries for the sake of an argument. Well, if I can find some way to spend only $50 a month on groceries, I'm actually making a lot more money in the end because I'm not spending as much money in the end. I'll be richer. And I think in some ways that's where we are using investing a lot. I'm going to invest in the new refrigerator because the old one is broken and I don't want to spend money on electricity costs all the time. Or like, I don't know, this is a completely random scenario, uh, buying an alarm clock so you don't waste money in the shower. Completely random. I don't know who would possibly. <clears throat> So essentially from this one definition, we get two different ideas on investing. Investing is you spend some money in order to make more money down the road, or you spend some money in order to save some money down the road. So that's a really powerful part of this definition, but does it hold up to scrutiny, right? Because we listed four things before, using investing personally, investing that Adam Wilde did, investing that Hank Green did, and investing that governments do. Does this definition meet all of those? So personal investing, yeah, okay, I had the example of the groceries. I had a mild example though. What's he really saving here? How was he, how by getting a new phone and spending money on a new phone, are you saving money? In the Hank Green one, okay. I mean, I can kind of see it because, you know, they don't have medical costs associated with having a proper digestion, but... That's about it. And then, okay, in the government one, there we go. Here's another solution there. You spend money on education, those people become more educated, more higher paying jobs that, you know, can give you more money in taxes. Okay, so this definition works for two and a half of the four categories. Hmm. But who said anything about money? You said purchase and richer. How could I mean anything else but money? Do you spend time? Huh. 
Maybe this is a crazy leap of logic based off of what I studied in university, but why can't we convert things to money? And in some ways we do do that conversion, right? Like I make $16 an hour. We already have this conversion between something intangible like time and money. Why don't we do that here? That actually gives us the Adam Wilde solution. He spends money on his phone in order to spend less time worrying about it. And we can even see it working in the inverse. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time learning how to cook in order to spend less money on restaurants. I'm gonna spend some time learning this really cool thing about coding in order to make more money at my job. I'm gonna spend five minutes now getting my clothes together so that I don't have to waste 20 minutes in the morning. So if you look back to the definition, instead of having two scenarios where it can work, we're now up to eight. Kind of. Because it's not as though you can actually make more time. You can spend less time doing something, but it's not as though you can make more time. Time is the most finite resource there is. But who said the only conversion had to be time? Why can't we convert other things like stress or happiness? And I understand how that goes into some deep dark rabbit holes for some people. Hey man, I'm an independent agent. No mathematical formula is going to hold me down, man. Is your karma being affected by this lockdown? Well, why don't you invest in the ancient Cantonese art of Yan Yi? Yan Yi, invest in your happiness. Right, and I can appreciate that, but the thing is companies do look at it in that way. They look at the money you're spending on entertainment as happiness dollars or a happiness investment. So if you personally deny yourself that flexibility, you deny yourself a whole bunch of power. Because here's the thing that becomes true with this definition. A really rich evening is one where you spend time with your significant other watching Netflix. Right? Like a whole bunch of investors say, no, that's a terrible use of money. You're not being anything productive. Where's the money coming in? But you're having fun and you're enjoying yourself with your partner. I mean, if you really wanted to, we can create equations that relate your happiness state with how likely you are to hold on to your job. But I think it can be far easier if we just state that a time spent with a significant other is a wonderful, enjoyable evening, one that we want to have. And if we spend time doing it, then that is fulfillment enough. So now we have eight different scenarios where we can apply this definition. But what if we go a step further, right? Because let's look back at the hand green scenario. The issue that we had with it was saving money on medical costs is technically true, but it's missing something. Well, why don't we just add more scenarios to it? Because if you think about it, investing in your digestion implies so much more than just medical costs. It's also better personal health. In fact, that's the great power of this definition. Many scenarios can be applied at once. Sometimes when you buy a new refrigerator, you get the added bonus of that little water tap thing when you like press it against it and the water comes out. So not only are you saving on electrical costs, but you're also saving time whenever you want to go get some water. Watching YouTube videos sometimes can not only help you going through your schoolwork in terms of like actually making you understand the material, but it also could like calm you down, you know, making you more happy, less stressed. Buying a new piece of clothing that like fits nice might help you land a job and might also make you just feel better. I also would argue this line of thinking will really help us when we talk about financial products, but that's a story for another video. So in summary, I would argue the best definition for investing that'll take us from our personal beliefs about investing to the high level investing is that an investment is a purchase you make that'll make you more richer in the future. This richer can come from someone having more of something or less costs. And this thing doesn't have to necessarily be money. It could be something else converted into money. And the power of this definition is that multiple things can be happening at once for one single investment. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next video when I use this definition for actual financial tools and give a little bit of a hot take. Peace.